Hello, my name is Joe Heikus. I'm the lead product manager for the Garmin Foreigner line. I've been the, the Foreigner guy for well over a decade now, and uh, it's, uh, it's my, my favorite thing to do. Well, the first Foreigner I, I ever really worked on was Foreigner 610, the, uh, and it was at the very end of its development phase when I, when I came on board. So I can't take a lot of credit for it uh, at all um, because other people worked hard to make that product a reality, and I just kind of came in at the, last, at the last minute. But what I did love about getting my chance to work on the Foreigner product then on that Foreigner 610 was that in Garmin, as a company in general, uh, individual employees have a a capability of making an impact on a product and I and I was able to make put my fingerprints on the product I was able to to have an impact so many different models have have had an impact on what the foreigner looks like today but um, I think that a watershed product for us for sure was foreigner 645 especially foreigner 645 music uh, product um, there was a lot of firsts for us in that product. Uh, obviously, the, the onboard presence of music was a big deal. We, we had to put a big, huge memory on that watch to, to be able to store a lot of, a lot of songs. Um, and furthermore, it, uh, we had Connect IQ, which is our third-party development platform. And it wasn't new to 4645 music, but it was really that product that brought it to the forefront in a lot of ways because we leveraged that platform uh, to, to create the applications for third-party music providers. So the feature that I probably use the most, quite honestly, because I, I, I am a little bit of a dinosaur, I'm a little bit of an old-school runner, you know, um, but I still find it cool that the watch just gives me mile splits every mile. Doesn't matter what I'm running or where I am, like, you know, ev every runner wants to know how fast that I run the last mile. And that is, of course, that's just, you know, table stakes for any GPS running watch uh, in, in 2023, of course, but, uh, but I still think it's pretty cool and I still like it. And now, of course, you know, with audio prompts, uh, if I'm playing music at the same time, it, I don't even look at the watch. It just tells me my last mile was, you know, 723 or whatever it might have been. The most difficult Forerunner to develop without even a close second place um, would be Forerunner 945 LTE. Um, that was... Um, no doubt, hands down, the hardest product for, for me in the foreigner product line that I was ever associated with, probably ever that we've made. Um, because the 945 LTE product was, um, it did everything any other foreigner had ever done, including music uh, and, and, and those sorts of features at the Connect IQ, third party apps. But then we add that autonomous connectivity and that we envisioned you know we if a watch could be autonomously connected so if the runner can be connected to the world without having to carry a phone that that would be a powerful and compelling use case and i think it is compelling and powerful for a lot of runners but it's also very difficult it was very difficult uh, to to develop that watch it involved it seemed like it involved nearly the whole company um, you know, from business development uh, people who were, you know, interacting with uh, uh, mobile phone carriers and uh, new technology for us in, in, in the watch and um, new features that we introduced that went with that watch. That was a, that was a big effort. It involved many departments across the whole company. And not, so I would say without even, without even thinking hard, 945 LTE was the hardest forerunner to make. When people ask me my favorite forerunner, uh, that is a tough question because um, how do you pick a favorite child if you have more than one kid? You know, like I have four kids and I could never go on camera and tell you which one is really my favorite. Um, so similarly with the forerunner products, I almost inevitably, I, it's the last one I worked on. It's kind of like my favorite. And this is, you know, you could even, you could ask the engineers I work with, you know, well, Joe, I thought you were a 610 guy. I'm like, well, that was, that was 610 days, you know. I've moved on to the, you know, 920 XT or whatever it, the case may be at the time. Um, and so really, I think just the fact that every time we make a foreign, I think, well, now we've done it. We've, we've made it so good. We're never going to make a better one. Um, and yet, we always do. We always come up with new ideas and, and there's new technology and, and, and the next one is always better. So it's a hard question to answer, but we talked earlier about the 945 LTE being the hardest product to develop. Um, and, and it really, in my opinion, it really was. Um, that's probably my personal favorite in the sense of most proud of that effort. But I personally really kind of like the 265 small because, um, 
like I, I, I sleep with the watch to get the sleep data and I like sleeping with a smaller watch. And so I just use one watch and that's kind of my, my daily driver now. Trying to imagine what the Forerunner products might be 20 years from now uh, is, uh, is really tough. Because if you look at where we've come from 2003, like the original Forerunner uh, 201, I think was our very first one uh, before I even worked at Garmin, um, which was like a, a candy bar strapped to your wrist. It didn't even tell time. Like, I mean, you couldn't use it as a watch, right? To compare that uh, when you look at a Forerunner 965, our, our existing top of the line watch compared to like what we started with 20 years ago. So if that kind of trend holds, you know, I, I don't know, you know, it's hard to imagine what a, a forerunner, you know, in the year 2043 might be, but I would imagine that um, um, it would be more beautiful, more capable, uh, brighter, um, more responsive, more accurate, uh, measuring things about your body and your physiology that we probably can't even imagine right now. I, I think almost certainly by then, it'll the connectivity will be a uh, just like everywhere. Like I, you know, I think that every watch will be connected aut autonomously to the internet for all sorts of different use cases. And heck, the way you know the way artificial intelligence is moving. Maybe it will read your mind, you know, on top of all that. Um, and, it, and it will know better than you do um, how motivated you are uh, to, to go running this morning. So I, I don't know. It, it's hard to imagine.